In the early morning hours of February 2nd, Amir Locke was asleep on the couch in his cousin's apartment. When police entered with a no-knock warrant, they shot Amir to death. Hey everybody, welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. I'm Christy Brower, here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey Katie. Hello. Hello, how's it going? Oh, it's going, it's going fine. I, I don't have a lot to say. It's been a really laid back day at my house and... <laughs> nice. <laughs> All is well. Well, glad to hear it. I am doing well. As well, I am coming off a sinus infection and finally starting to feel a little bit better. So that makes me happy. Good. We'll yeah. take it for sure. Yes, we will. Well, today is our Tuesday case. Yes. And as per our new season three uh, format, we will have two short segments and a long segment. That's right. Because that's how we roll. So, okay, why don't you kick us off with some creepy crime? Do you know who Mike Malloy is? I don't believe so. Well, I'm going to tell you all about it. This is Mike Malloy. Mm. Mike Malloy had a murder plot against him. Mike Malloy was a bit of a drunk and it was a problem because he was running up quite the bar tab. Uh oh. This was in the 1930s uh, after the Great Depression and things were very bad in New York City. And Mike Malloy had been in a really rough spot. He was a former firefighter, he was from Ireland. He'd moved to the U.S. for a better life, but didn't really find a better life. Mm. Uh, because of the Depression, he'd been unemployed, he was homeless, and he was an alcoholic. And the speakeasy that he typically hung out at had about had enough of him. This was a place called The Mermaid. Mm. The Mermaid was owned by a guy named Tony Marino. Mm. And Tony was the proprietor of that establishment, but Tony was also a murderer. Tony had discovered a few years before this that he could scam life insurance. And there was a homeless woman named Maybell that was often in his establishment. And he thought, you know, nobody would miss her. She has no family or anything. So he took out an insurance uh, policy on her. Mm -hmm. And then he fed her so much alcohol and left her in front of a window, uh, unconscious on a very cold night, and let her die. Good Lord. And he collected big time. The equivalent would have been about $130,000 today. Oh, my gosh. Well, as you can imagine, he ran through that money pretty quick. So... In come Mike Malloy. Mike also is homeless and has no family and nobody that seems to care about him. And he decides yet again, this is the answer to my problem. But he brings in a friend who's an undertaker. Ooh. He says, hey, no problem. We'll split the life insurance money and I can get him picked up and buried in no time and get a death certificate and we're good to go. So that's the plan. Well... The problem was that wasn't uh, the only person that wanted in on the take. Mm. So a few other people ended up getting in on it as well. Some of the regulars that were at the, the mermaid, they all wanted to be involved in this. Apparently they were all totally cool with murdering someone and trying to take the money from it. So they called Sounds themselves nice. the murder trust. <laughs> they named themselves. Mm -hmm. What the hell? 
Yes. So I the murder this trust is soon to be the go to prison trust. Mm. I'm just saying. You might be psychic. So the murder <laughs> trust included a grocer named Dan Crisberg, a guy named Tough Tony Bastone, who was just a basic <laughs> bad guy. So we uh, have iceberg lettuce guy, tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> we have old carrot nose. No. Yeah. <laughs> then there were a couple of local criminals, John McNally, Tin Ear Smith. <laughs> Did he have one of those ear trumpets? Is that? I have no idea. And I think Joan, they might have been made of tin at one point. <laughs> uh, maybe. And some guy named Joe Maglione. Mm. And then later, the bartender, a guy named Joe Murphy, also got involved. So now we've got way too many people involved in this plot. But yeah. the murder trust is going strong. So they take out, I don't know why they do this, but they take out policies on Nicholas Mellory. Even mm. though our guy's name is Mike Malloy, because they decided that uh, with the Undertaker's connections, they could just forge the death certificate of a fictitious man. They'd have the dead body. They'd make up oh, a name. So they wouldn't use their real name. So mm -hmm. they couldn't be tracked back. Okay. So they have this plan, right? So it they took out, it looks like, more than one policy. Um, and And... Getting the reports greedy. kind of differ on how much money. It looks like it was up to like $3,500, which again would have been more than $100,000 in current times. Mm -hmm. And so the plan starts. First thing they do, the, har the problem that they had with Mike is that he was nearly impossible to kill. <laughs> really? It took eight tries. Oh my God. <laughs> so... The first thing they did was just try to feed him enough alcohol that he'd just drink himself to death in the bar. They did that for three days in a row, and it just didn't work. Occasionally, he'd wow. stop drinking long enough to eat a free sardine sandwich. <gasps> ay, ay, ay. Mm -hmm. That probably would but, have just uh, killed me right there. Oh, But he lived. So then John McNally said, hey, you know what? I'll just run him over with my car. That'll work out. Convenient. But they didn't have the guts to do it, so they hired a taxi driver, bringing another person into the plot named Harry Green. They offered him 150 bucks out of the insurance payout. So this <laughs> fool says, sure. So they I mean, pull... for 150 bucks, I mean, wouldn't you just hit a random stranger with your car? Right, why not? What the hell? As you do, right? As so you don't. They haul drunk Mike out of the speakeasy, and drive him away from the speakeasy in the cab. Then they haul him out of the cab and hold him up while Green revs up the engine. And somehow Malloy manages to roll out of the way twice from the cab. The third time he runs him over and then backs over him just to be sure. And then they take off thinking he's just going to die in the street. So then I'm they start calling no. around. Right. Well, Joe Murphy starts calling around the next day to all of the local morgues looking for his missing brother. Well, they just um, keep reading obituaries and he's not showing up. And they finally find him in a local hospital with a broken collarbone. <gasps> this dude is Gumby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So they decide that didn't work. And they're a little frustrated with trying to kill Mike Malloy because it's not working. So they... Decide to kill Joe Murphy instead. Joe didn't know. And <laughs> I would assume not. So Joe, remember, is the bartender. So they drug him and they put Malloy's identification in his pocket and they run over him with Green's cab. But guess who also doesn't die? <laughs> but he does spend two months in the hospital and is now very pissed off. <laughs> They're very bad at murder. They should really just stop. Yeah, they're terrible at murder. So, then murder they move trust. on. Murder yeah. distrust. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> murder fools. So, then they decide that they'll freeze him to death. So, they get him drunk. You know, I mean, he's like drinking like a fish every day anyway. Mm -hmm. So, they get him drunk. They carry him to an a park bench. And it's winter. It's cold. 
They take off all of his clothes and pour water on him and leave him. Oh thinking that he will die. <laughs> the water might have saved him. Well, when Marino <laughs> gets to the speakeasy the next morning, guess who he finds curled up in a basement of the in the basement of the building waiting for them to open. Yep. Mike Malloy. He uh, <laughs> had walked back and fell asleep in the speakeasy. That's the only place he really knew to go. So he just went there and broke in. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So now they've made a few payments on the insurance trust and they're getting pissed because uh, their murder is just isn't happening. So they offer him a plate of oysters that they have doused in ethanol God. because that is supposed to kill you. Well, it doesn't. He eats the whole plate and burps and hands it back and asks for another. <laughs> and he's fine. <laughs> he's like pickled from the inside out. So totally. Yeah. Yeah. So they decide now instead of giving him whiskey and gin, they're going to give him wood alcohol, which also should kill you. That's methanol. Right. And during prohibition, it killed like 50,000 people who were right. drinking that because they couldn't get a hold of better alcohol. Yikes. Well, anyway, he drank a whole bunch of wood alcohol and kept coming back for more, according to the Smithsonian Magazine, and uh, it didn't kill him. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so then they decide, well, maybe food poisoning is the ticket. So they let a can of sardines rot. This kills oh. me. I can almost not say it without oh. retching. It might happen. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Well, mm. you know, our grandpa ate sardines and we were not big fans. So mm. yeah. they let a can yeah. of sardines rot and made sandwiches out of them. Also put shrapnel in the sandwich. And Malloy ate them up. No problem. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, my God. Shrapnel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? Yeah. Five months after the plan was concocted and seven previous attempts later, Mike Malloy finally died. They finally hauled him into a hotel room, drunk, put a tube in his mouth, uh, attached it to a gas lamp, and bound it tightly with a rag, and basically killed him from carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh, my God. So. Oh, that also turns my stomach. Yep. Oh. So with the assistance of a local doctor on the take named Frank Manzella, they filed a death certificate stating that pneumonia has killed him and bury him in a $10 coffin. So they cash out the first policy, which is $800. But then they're told they will have to wait for the rest of the settlement. And nobody likes waiting. And so the, the murder trust is getting very distrustful of each other. And Tony Bastone... Let's say it's Bastoni. I like that better. Tony Bastoni. Sure. <laughs> That, that that matches. Uh, that fits. He complained so much about the money that uh, someone murdered him outside of the mermaid one night. <laughs> so people started, everybody knew what these guys had done because they had tried so many times. It was it had gotten way too public. And right. there were whisperings to the police about what had actually happened to Mike Malloy. I so they surprised. finally exhume Mike Malloy. And discover that he was never embalmed because uh, it costs $5 to embalm. And so Pasqua hadn't wanted to spend that money. So he hadn't bothered. <laughs> so it I, wasn't... I would think he was sort of already from the inside out from, you know, right? all the wood alcohol and stuff. Well, it wasn't hard for the uh, medical examiner to decide that he actually died of carbon monoxide poisoning and definitely not from pneumonia. So they murder or murdered up, they rounded up the murder trust and they sent them to trial. So Harry Green had turned state's witness <laughs> and was testifying against all of them. And Tony Marino, Dan Kreisberg, Joe Murphy, and Frank Pasqua turned on each other in court. <laughs> Marino even tried to plead insanity, but uh, <laughs> the, the prosecutor wasn't having it. Yeah. Stupidity, more like stupidity. Yeah. So these four were eventually all convicted of murder and they were transferred to Sing Sing where they were all convicted or, or sent being sent to the electric chair. Oh, wow. Harry Green 
because he turned state's witness, he was only sentenced five to 10 years. And Dr. Frank was only sentenced for three months for failing to report a suspicious death, which is pretty rich because he lied. But yeah. whatever. Here we go. So in June of 1934, Tony Marino, Jan Kreisberg, and Frank Pasqua were all electrocuted. Oh, my God. Same day. All three of them. Did they die? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, did they pick anything up? You know, like. Yeah. This... These, these softies were a lot easier to kill. Okay. Just wondering. But get this, two hours before the execution, Joe Murphy was given a reprieve due to being diagnosed as mentally unbalanced. You know, he's the one that got hit by the car. Right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Apparently, he had quite the past as well. He was born Archie Mott and had been con committed to the Connecticut School of Boys for uh, bad behavior and had escaped just a few years earlier. Oh, wow. So they decided they wouldn't execute a man who was clinically unstable until they did a month later. Oh, wow. So he was finally buried, and there's a lot of legend about him. Mike Malloy was finally buried after all of mm -hmm. this. Uh, he's been known as Mike the Indestructible, Mike mm -hmm. the Durable, and Iron Mike. And he's buried in the Ferncliff Cemetery in uh, New York, where visitors still come and lay flowers for him after all this time, because he's he was... Mike, the indestructible Iron right? Mike, and his very sloppy and stupid killers all saw the chair for it. Right? Wow. So I don't know if I can't think of much of a creepier crime than this one. Right? My God, like you're so desperate to kill somebody, you're going to try eight times. Wow. <laughs> this guy just keeps on going. He, he's like the <laughs> energizer alcoholic, man. He just. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Okay. Well, Mike Malloy, keep that in mind. There you go. Keep that in mind. Indestructible. Yeah. Well, our main case today, I hate to even say, is the murder of Amir Locke. Yeah. This happened last week on February 2nd. Before 7 a.m., uh, Mirlock was asleep on the couch at his cousin's house. The Minneapolis police uh, had a no-knock warrant. Now, there's mixed information, and the warrant itself has not been released. And so I'm going to tell you what's been said, but that isn't confirmed, that they were at the wrong address. Mm -hmm. Not 100% sure if that's true. But what we do know for sure is that Amir Locke was not on the warrant. Mm -hmm. Right, not... and we know that because the police are saying that, right? They're admitting that. The police that. are saying that. not on the warrant. This warrant was in relation to a murder that had happened. And Amir was not involved, wasn't named at all. So they had a key to this apartment. They unlocked the door, walked in, and... A police officer named Mark Hanneman kicked the couch where Amir was sleeping. Amir sort of stirred, and I think Amir must have been sleeping with his handgun, like, under his pillow or under the couch. He, uh... Near him, a, anyway. Near yeah. him. He was licensed and legally, you know, okay to have the gun to defend himself. Mm-hmm. He reached for the gun in the video, and I'm not showing the video because nobody needs to see it unless you really want to. You can find it online. He reached for the gun. Um, he never pointed it at anyone. He never even got the blanket off from his face before Hanneman shot him three times and killed him. Yeah. We're in this place again yeah which and we're and it's in minneapolis yeah. where right now three of the police officers who facilitated Derek chauvin's murder of george floyd are on trial federal trial yeah. for hate crime yeah but now here we sit again this is the same effing police force mm -hmm. that has now killed Another innocent black man. Yep. 
No-knock warrants are notoriously um, dangerous. They're notoriously um, pointed mostly at the Black community. Mm -hmm. You would think after Breonna Taylor's murder that maybe this country would have learned something. Mm -hmm. And of course, now the governor has put a moratorium Ooh. on no-knock warrants. And uh, yeah, you think? Yeah, th this is too damn little, too damn late. Where's mm -hmm. the federal law? Where's the federal law banning no-knock warrants? Yeah. Just across the board. Can we please have that, like, tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they've brought in, so Min Minnesota has brought in um, the people who helped write Kentucky's no-knock warrant law after Breonna Taylor's death. But, you know, apparently we just have to keep murdering black people before we can get these laws, which is a bunch of horseshit. Yeah. Now, Amir Locke was 22 years old. Mm -hmm. He was about to move from Minneapolis to Texas to be closer to his mom. And he, music was his first love. He was a hip hop artist who really wanted to get his career going. And that was his plan. Once he got to Texas, mm -hmm. he was a good kid. Yeah. Who didn't deserve this in any way at all. No, no, not in any way. And this and is the problem. Nothing. nothing. So don't mm -hmm. give me the whole, if you just, uh, cooperate, you'll be fine, routine. Because yeah, no, shut the hell he up with that did shit. Nothing. He slept on the couch. He legally got startled had a gun. awake. He did nothing. Yeah. yeah. Am I? He carried a gun for his own protection. The seventh floor. Yeah. The seventh floor. What the hell was going to go on on the seventh floor, anyway? That residents were going to be safe. Right. And they weren't. No knock warrants no. are not safe warrants. Here's the other no. thing. Initially, this warrant was a knock warrant. And it was changed last minute to a no knock warrant. We do not know why. The justification for that has not been shared yet. Hopefully, eventually, we'll actually get to see the warrant and know for sure if it actually was the right address. Mm -hmm. And to find out why mm -hmm. this had been changed to if it was not so urgent yeah that it didn't need to be a no-knock warrant initially why then did it need to be one uh the que i have endless questions and they're all just fucking pointless frankly mm -hmm. at this point because the bottom line is amir lock is dead yeah for sleeping on the couch yeah. i for nothing. guess nothing at all yeah and you know if we want to tout Second Amendment rights and that people have the right to have a gun to defend themselves and defend their homes, then what happens during no-knock warrants when people yeah. who do not know who are coming into their homes try to defend themselves with those guns they are supposedly supposed to have the right to have? Yeah. Clearly, that's not true for black people. Well, Clearly, it isn't. Ask Breonna Taylor. Ask Breonna Taylor. Ask Breonna Taylor's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who went through absolute hell after her murder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The medical examiner has um, stated that the cause of death is homicide. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two ways that deaths are classified. One is cause of death. One of, is manner of death. So cause of death is homicide by uh, gunshot wounds, right? Mm -hmm. Manner of death will be determined by... Probably the attorney general's office. I'm not sure exactly. Um, they are looking at potentially charging uh, Mark Hanneman, which, yes. Yeah. Since when can you just go blazing into somebody's apartment and shoot them and kill them? You, you cannot do that. No. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are SWAT. I don't care, you know. No. Hanneman has had, has a good record. He's very educated. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, he was administering a no-knock warrant, and no-knock warrants are nothing but permission for police to murder people. Apparently. I mean, how, how many times do we have to see it? Mm -hmm. Particularly black people. 
Yep. This young man's family is absolutely heartbroken. Oh, as they're you can imagine. horrified. It's horrible. Yeah. And there's video, body cam video, as us as per usual in the last couple of years. There's body cam video, and it's already out there in the world of this happening. Yeah. So there's not really any question about what did happen. No. No, though in the initial press conference, uh, the mayor just really couldn't answer or wouldn't answer the questions from the press that were pretty aggressive. Uh, why wouldn't they be? And then the police chief uh, walked out. She yep. answered a few questions, and when the going got tough, she just walked out. Well, and the police initially reported that he went for his gun and pointed it at the police, mm -hmm. which, first and foremost, is his goddamn right. Well, <laughs> secondly, right. no, he did not. No, he didn't. He touched and there, his gun, video and he had a blanket over his head. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it in the video. He never even got the blanket off from his head to see who was in the room or what was happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they None did yell a few commands to him, like put your hands on your head or get on the floor, a couple of things. But again, if you're sound asleep, right. I'm thinking about the way some of the people in my house sleep. If someone barged in and you were sound asleep and, and somebody started yelling commands like that at you, especially somebody like Amir who had never been in trouble, like your first thought isn't, oh my God, the police are here, you know? No. You, well, and that's what his parents it's a confusion said. confusion and trying to wake up and yeah. Right. And his parents both said that he was a deep sleeper as a kid and that they felt like from watching the video that he it was taking him a minute to wake up and understand even begin to understand what was happening. Yeah. And he never even saw who shot him. No. There were a billion ways this could have been handled better. That wouldn't have ended in the death of anybody. Like, number one, no more fucking no-knock no -knock warrants. Yeah. yeah. That needs yeah. to be illegal everywhere. It what does. do you expect people to, to do? I mean, this country is full of guns. And we're told all the time, you have the right to defend yourself and your property. And blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. We live in Idaho. Believe me. We know the litany. Mm -hmm. So then you defend yourself, but because it's the police breaking into your house, then now you're breaking the law? Where do we draw the line here? Right. I mean, I wouldn't know. What if you didn't know? Somebody's just breaking into your house. You're going to go defend yourself. Sure. Sure. It's insane. Well, that's what happened with Brianna Taylor's boyfriend. It is. He didn't he know. His girlfriend in her bed. Yeah. He didn't know. It just come in your house, guns a-blazing? Yeah. What has this country become? Yeah. It's awful. It's absolutely awful. It's awful, but I'm going to say right now, all the people that come in our comment section and yell at us about the Second Amendment when we talk about crime, I better see you on the front lines of this one. Yeah. Absolutely. Because... You should be defending Amir Locke's right to have had that mm -hmm. gun mm -hmm. and to have reached for it when someone broke into his apartment. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. We, you do, we do not. You do not get to have it both ways. No. Nope. If this isn't okay, it isn't okay. Across the board. I don't care who we're talking about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I hate this case. I'm so freaking mad that it happened again. I'm just, I can't even believe this happened again. I can't. And these are just the ones we've heard about. You know, right. these are just the ones that got big enough that somehow they made it into the national media or right. onto TikTok. You know, social media has given wings to a lot of cases that would have been swept yes. under the rug. Like Brown Taylor's it's, would have been swept under the rug for sure. It's absolutely um, true. Social media has made it much harder to hide errors and mistakes like this. Yep. But he deserves justice. His family deserves justice. And... If this cannot be the catalyst for change as far as no-knock warrants, I don't know what, what would. I don't know why well, Brianna frankly, Taylor's case didn't. Can we just do away with the Minneapolis Police Department, please? Right. Because they can't stop killing black people. Mm -hmm. Can we just get rid of them? Like, what is the point of this? Right. There has got to be some major changes in that city. Major well, we're not changes. learning from our experiences. We're just no. repeating them over and over and over again. Ugh. No, there needs to be a serious, 
overhaul of their police department, of their administration. of And, and there was. That's what kills me. There was after Derek Chauvin to some degree. <laughs> but well, here we are again. Uh, they did a shit job. Let's just say that. They mm -hmm. did a shit job. And thinking yeah. that that police department can handle no-knock warrants. Are you effing kidding me? No. Sorry, I'm trying to get monetized or i would be saying the f word a lot more <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably be demonetized anyway <laughs> probably uh anyway so that is what we know about amir Locke. we will of course mm -hmm. keep updating as more things come out um you know hearing from the medical examiner more also um seeing the actual warrant and what it says and then to see what the ag's office just determines you know of course this is under a it's a, it's a police shooting, so it's under review by a committee, blah, blah, blah. We've heard this a thousand times. Yeah. And we'll see what happens because there's it's a possibility that uh, the officer who shot Amir will face charges. As oh, he, he will. I really think he should. I, I think they won't be able to avoid that. But by the time this is uh, going on, I feel like... Uh, they, they won't be able to avoid it. It's, it's gotten too big. I hope so. Yeah. All right. Well, Katie, you might need to bring us up a little here if you can. Well, I mean, I'm going to try. Because <laughs> we do have our final segment of today is a WTF crime. WTF, Washington. Uh oh, for once, it's not a oh Idaho crime, but oh, wow. something went down today in Washington State that uh, deserves some attention because the uh, perp is still on the loose. Mm -hmm. In Richland, Washington, this afternoon, a man went bonkers and shot and killed one person and injured a store employee. Oh my God! What store? A Fred Meyer. Oh, no. So this is what he looks like. He is, appears to be probably a middle-aged white man. Uh, he was wearing some kind of a plaid shirt with a vest over top of it. He did have a mask on. A uh, gator, maybe, even. Yeah. And he, uh, it appeared that he had some words, uh, at least some kind of an exchange, with a gentleman in the store and pulled out a gun and shot him and then also shot and, and killed him and then shot and injured a store employee on his way out. He was driving a white pickup truck. And as of the last news release, the Richmond police department are still searching for him. Oh my gosh. That's terrible. Yeah. And they don't know what the exchange was about or anything yet. They don't know. They don't know. It was just, it was really, really shocking and scary, of course, to everybody, oh. you know, that was there. Uh, the whole, the store is so shaken up, the whole neighborhood. They locked down local schools, of course, you know. Um, oh. Initially, it was hard. Like, they didn't know how many people were injured, like, you know, what really happened. But now they know that uh, just, it was two people injured, but, well, one person injured and one person killed. But... I, uh, what the hell is going on? I, I guess that's kind of where I'm at with this one is just what is going on with people? Yeah. This idea the, that you just walk into a store and get mad at somebody and shoot at them. Yeah. I, just, yeah. We're like the wild west these days. Yeah. The amount mm -hmm. of a crime the last week or so that we have seen that is just so unhinged and terrible. I'm just. Yeah. And even as a true crimer, I mean, you know, we follow a lot of stories and a lot of cases and a lot of you guys are sending us cases frequently, which I really, really appreciate because we can't possibly watch them all, uh, you know, or, or see them all. And so you guys send ones to us that you think might uh, give us some kind of, you know, that, that might be of interest to us. And they are. But holy hell, this last week has been insane. Insane. It really has. It really has. You'd think we were operating on a full moon, but we're not. No. It's just really, it's 
just be safe out there. Like, I, I guess that's all I want to say is be safe out there. People are mm -hmm. not in their right minds right now. And I think people oh. that are a little on the edge are a lot on the edge currently. Mm -hmm. People that's in your true. life that might be seeming kind of radical and over the top, keep an eye on them because Definitely. that's who is snapping right now. Yeah, we're sure seeing it. Now, I suspect that they will find this guy. There are major manhunts out for him currently. And well, maybe I imagine some they have will his, learn what happened. His, uh, his uh, license plate number, I would bet, where they've got video of that vehicle. I would think so, too. Yep. Um, it does uh, appear that the em store employee will be okay. They are hospitalized, but it does appear that they will be okay. Oh, my gosh. But that poor man that he killed just. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Yep. So as of five o'clock this evening, Washington State Police were not currently assisting in the search, but I'm guessing that's going to fan out here, you know, shortly because, well, it'll have to. But Yeah. Yeah. Because they've got to find him. Yeah. So just uh, for all my Washington peeps, one more time, that's what he looks like. Somebody's going to recognize him. I that's mean, he looks like, like a hundred thousand men I know. Like, yeah, but the vest, the shirt, you know, somebody's mm -hmm. going to recognize him and go, that dude's my neighbor. What's you know? in the cart? Can you tell? Hmm? What is in the shopping cart? Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know. It looks like a bag or something, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's get another look. It is a bag. Look. Is the gun in the bag? It was just a handgun. I, I'm guessing the gun was just concealed. So what is the person. bag? Yeah. I would, that might help people recognize him because that's odd. Yeah, that is odd. Like, why is he walking in and out of a grocery store with that in his cart? Because that's a pretty good sized black bag. Yeah, it is. Interesting. And what was in that bag? Yeah. That makes you worry a little. It does. Makes, makes me wonder. Probably lucky that that's all that happened in that Fred Meyer today. Yes. Well, and that no children were shot, you know, or oh, yeah, in a grocery anything store. that could happen. People are just trying to buy their damn groceries right. and this stuff is going on. That's my guess, though, is that somebody's going to see that picture of him and that truck and go, I know this douchebag, you know, yeah. and call it in. I, I suspect that they'll have the him in the next day or, or two. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. So, but now you know, and you've seen him, too. So well, now we know. Yep. Keep an eye out. Well, that's what I've got. Whew. Well, I think that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, this is our Tuesday case. We will be back on Wednesday with another episode. And Wednesday night with uh, the uh, Wednesday night case updates at 7 p.m. Mountain. And the Psychic Hour on Thursday also at 7 p.m. Mountain. So we've got lots more great content coming. So please stick with us, like, subscribe, and share. And go check us out over on Patreon. We do offer extra content. There are many cases uh -huh. over on Patreon that you've never heard unless you are a patron. And some of those mm -hmm. cases are cases you have asked us to do, and we've already done them, and they're on Patreon. So go That's check us true. out. True Crime Paranormal on Patreon. You become a patron. You get access to all that extra content. Yep. Well, you know it. We are True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Thanks for being here. Take care.